Yo, Rock and Willie again. It's been cramped down here in the basement since the cave-in, but Bob is out terrorizing the village again, so I should have a little peace and quiet for a change. The good news is I closed on this fixer-upper yesterday, but there's a crazy old bat squatting in it, thinks she's the Queen of England. The coppers are promising to toss her out on her can. Until then, we might as well get this last installment over with. Ad Holes. The Unsolicited History of Advertising. Chapter 5. Ruse at 11. But first, this message. Our candidate is in flattering lighting and full bright color. Their candidate is in grainy high contrast black and white. Spotted through a telephoto lens from behind a bush. Coming back from God only knows where. Our guy points at the horizon and holds a baby. Their guy doesn't have a baby. Our guy has clean headlines and the beautiful lens flare America needs. Here's a scary graph over a photo of their guy awkwardly laughing. Here's a photo of our guy saluting military veterans. Our guy gets stock footage of sunrises and an American flag. Their guy's flag is upside down and on fire. This election, the choice is yours. Their guy or our guy. Inspiring slogan. My dear Nana always said it was never nice to talk about religion and politics in mixed company. Prepared to be appalled. Ever since we crawled out of the mud and took a look around, we wondered how we got here. And like all idiots lacking credible evidence do, they made it up. They must have had a lot of spare time on their hands as well, because they came up with a buttload of gods for every phenomenon and occasion. I am El Nino! All other tropical storms must bow before El Nino! At last, there were just too many to keep track of. So to accommodate the slower students in the class, the myth makers tended to focus more heavily on the head honcho, numero uno, Mayor McCheese. And because violence, lust, and greed are hard written into our DNA and must be suppressed in a civilized society so we don't have to worry about someone throwing a fire extinguisher at our heads every time we turn around. They made him a badass. Someone who was gonna lay down the law. The Lord Jehovah has given unto you these 15... 10! 10 commandments for all to obey! And the Invisible Man has a special list of 10 things he does not want you to do. And if you do any of these 10 things, he has a special place full of fire and smoke and burning and torture and anguish where he will send you to live and suffer and burn and choke and scream and cry forever and ever till the end of time. But he loves you. In reality, the Old Testament alone has some 613 laws, from thou shalt not wear plaid socks on Tuesdays to eternal damnation for anyone who gets kicked in the balls. Talk about insult to injury, but them's the rules. Say hi to Beelzebub for me. It was all working out great for those who loved a good stoning, till this hippie showed up and started preaching peace and love, and I'm asking if we can just all get along. I mean, come on. Like, that's gonna happen. Wake up! Quiet, Mom. Well, I can't hear a thing. I think it was blessed are the cheesemakers. What's so special about the cheesemakers? Well, obviously, it's not meant to be taken literally. It refers to any manufacturers of dairy products. Then he went postal on the animals and flipped over their tables. Ha <laughs> Yeah! Of course, the Romans couldn't have that and dealt with him in the same way they did all troublemakers and rabble-rousers. Problem was, his old gang couldn't accept their leader had moved on and had to come up with some real doozies to justify all the slacking off they've been doing by following him around. Saying he was, uh, born of a virgin and walked on water and, uh, and rose from the dead. Yeah, that's the ticket. And lo and behold, they believed it. The first thing to go out the window was that touchy, feely, love thy neighbor stuff. Particularly if they don't worship the same God as you. Let he who is without sin kick the f 
first ass. And those who remained unconvinced could always expect a visit from the Spanish Inquisition. Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition! Just think of them as medieval chiropractors. And they had everyone pretty much straightened out until some damn nosy people started looking a little closely at things. The nosiest being Galileo, who pointed his spyglass at the moon and noted that it was not a perfect sphere as all heavenly objects were supposed to be, but pockmarked with craters. He then discovered that Venus cycled through phases over a course of seven months, and finally was able to see four moons orbiting Jupiter, proving that the Earth was not the center of the universe after all. But Pope Farty Pants didn't like it, mainly because it gave credence to sun worshippers, and so Galileo was forced to recant under pain of death. Thus one of the greatest minds that ever lived was confined to house arrest for the rest of his life. Still it was a better deal than many of his fellow thinkers received, and yet despite the dangers of inquiry that still exist to this day, people kept looking at stuff and would discover all kinds of blasphemous things such as that all organisms are made of cells, of which are made of far smaller things still. And then Darwin discovered that all life is related and shares a common tree. But how old that tree was remained a mystery until researchers investigating radioactivity found that there was a clock in the rocks. And through radiometric dating, currently estimate the age of the Earth to be 4.5 billion years old. If the number was closer to 6,000 years, you can bet your bottom dollar more of those who interpret the Bible literally would be embracing science today. Which is a shame, because the real story is far more fascinating than the fiction being sold them. But it is in organized religion's best interest that their followers remain willfully ignorant. For if their holy book is viewed in any way less than historically accurate, they fear their moral authority will be threatened, and will no longer be able to shove their views down one end while extracting as much gold as they can from the other and they are in no way averse to begging and crying and lying to get it. Thank you, Lord. You say you, you want to make a $500 vow? Then do it. Then do it. If that takes faith for you, do it. You want to make a $100 vow or two? If that takes faith, see, I like a thousand because I know I got you. I got you. I don't know why God said $300. I don't know. Maybe that's something between you and God. But I'm asking every person to lay a seed of $300 on this altar. How long have you had these headaches? Uh, about five, ten minutes. God help him! <laughs> and how do you feel now? Well, it's a throbbing. Well, God bless you. A throbbing headache comes right up through your heels, up through the hip bone, the knee bone, up the spine, up through your back, through your head like Satan was belching through his head. <laughs> exactly. Do you believe? I believe. He believes. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless. Amen. Hallelujah. Rid this man of these headache demons, of these migraine demons. Heal oh. this man. Would Jesus not be appalled by these charlatans after having given his life to expel them from the temple? And for burning books and people in his name? Would he not be glad to see the meek triumph at the expense of those who have long used a bastardized version of his teaching to subjugate them? Not to say that democracies are immune to oppression, but as opposed to an authoritarian state which controls everything you see and hear, those pulling the strings in a free country must craft their message messages carefully to gain consent of the people. Best way to start is to hit them with a bunch of sappy propaganda to tug at their heartstrings. Then tell them how bad the other guy screwed up and that only you can put things back the way they were in the good old days. And once they give you the power, change all the rules so no one will ever be able to unseat you. Therein is the fatal flaw in representative government by which countless dictators have wrested power from the people. Of course, America's founding fathers could never have instituted a true democracy such as the Athenians had, whereby every citizen could vote directly on the issues, and anyone who got too big for his britches could be ostracized by a simple majority. For one, the country was far too big. 
agreed, and many of them agreed with Socrates that most people were too ignorant to make informed decisions and that only the best and brightest should rule. John Adams was certainly of that opinion when he suggested that only the most noble men should ever be president. Then he goes and passes the Alien and Sedition Act, destroying freedom of the press because he wanted to have the luxury of being able to dish it out but not have to take it. I'm John Adams, and I approve this message because Jefferson is the son of a half-breed Indian squaw raised on hoe cakes. To be fair, politics was a rather dangerous game in those days, and though it may not be quite as cutthroat, it is no less vitriolic today. There have been few more skilled at this game than Lyndon Johnson, and his crowning achievement in the art was this ad painting his rival Barry Goldwater in the 1964 presidential race as a genocidal maniac. the stakes to make a world in which all of God's children can live or to go into the dark. We must either love each other or we must die. Vote for President Johnson on November 3rd. Yet soon as he won, he greatly expanded the war in Vietnam. But never mind your detractors, because you can always silence them by demonizing the substances that had woken them to your manipulation. Which was an easy sell to the still sleeping public, for they had been long warned against the dangers of the devil weed, from which one puff can make you a murderous psychopath. Wait, wait. When he wasn't shilling his cancer sticks, Jack Webb was always there to remind us of that fact. Marijuana is the flame, heroin is the fuse, LSD is the bomb. So don't you try to equate liquor with marijuana, mister, not with me. You may sell that jazz to another pothead, but not to somebody who spends most of their time holding some sick kid's head while he vomits and wretches sitting on a curbstone at four o'clock in the morning. And when his knees get enough starch back in him so he can stand up and empty his pockets, you can bet he'll turn out a stick or two on marijuana. In reality, cigarettes alone kill more people than all illicit drugs do in 30. And anyone doing this sort of thing, intentionally or not, is far more likely to be indulging in... The mountain. A symbol of all the good natural ingredients that go into bush. So don't just reach for a beer. Head for the mountains. But that didn't stop this self-righteous ding -ling from waging her so-called war on drugs with the most laughably simple-minded public service announcements ever conceived. This is drugs. This is your brain on drugs. Any questions? Yeah, can I get a side order of brains? While Nancy Drew was saying no to pot, Big Pharma was saying yes and making billions turning people into junkies with their opioids and hooking children on powerful stimulants like Adderall and Ritalin, creating a whole generation of meth addicts. I'm on meth. I'm on meth. I'm on it too. Look, I get it. Methamphetamine transforms human beings into golems. Precious. But is this the best you got? Besides, if Daddy-O here wants to fry his serotonin and dopamine receptors to a crisp, isn't that his right as a free man? Not that all public service ad campaigns have been such unmitigated disasters. How else would we have known not to burn down the forest or trash the environment? The city or in the woods, keep America McGruff here. See that guy? He's stealing that fight. Now, see that lady? Why? She's a snitch. Some people have a deep, abiding respect for the natural beauty that was once this country. And some people don't. People start pollution. People can stop it. You'd think they could have gotten a real Native American to play the crying Indian, though. Another potential problem with representative governments is that your choice may be little more than an illusion. Welcome to King Burger, where well, we can do it your way, but don't get crazy. For one thing, there is no way you're getting on that stage unless you have deep pockets, or are in the pockets of those who do. Ugh. 
Perhaps we should make them wear patches like NASCAR drivers, so we'll know who's really calling the shots should they be elected. And though it may seem like we have a whole cast of characters to pick from, that's only if you live in one of these states. Everyone else can go suck an egg. And owing to the extreme polarization of both parties by their radical wings, we are often forced to choose between two people nobody wants. There's nothing I can say about our former head case in chief that hasn't been said already, other than the common refrain often heard from his supporters that he's not a politician is utter hogwash. Politicians are consummate adults, for they are obligated to promote themselves, and no one has ever devoted their life so shamelessly to that pursuit more than Trump. Nobody knows the system better than me. Nobody knows politicians better than I do. Nobody knows. Nobody's better. Nobody's stronger. There's nobody bigger or better at the military than I am. I love the First Amendment. Nobody know, loves it better than me. Nobody loves the Bible more than I do. Nobody even understands it but me. Nobody can do it like me. Which is why I alone can fix it. One thing you can say about him is he's not a lawyer like 90% of those we promote to the highest offices. Not that he's any stranger to litigation, having been named in over 4,000 lawsuits and counting. Not to mention that he has surrounded himself with some of the shadiest, two-faced, lying, nut-job attorneys the world has ever seen. What do you call 500 lawyers at the bottom of the ocean? An excellent start. Lawyers like to pass themselves off as defenders of truth, justice, and the American way. But most couldn't care less if their clients get away with murder so long as they win. Doesn't fit, you must acquit. Those who turn politician may tell you they don't have their finger on the scale, but yet this beneficiary of the crooked playing field they have created for themselves tells it straight, but only because he thinks no one else is listening. They don't send the lawyers to jail because we run the country. So how, what does it mean you run the country? Uh, it means you... We make the laws, and when we do so, we make them in a way that is advantageous to the lawyers. Good luck getting a straight answer out of them on the record, though. One of the lessons I learned early on, never answer the question that is asked of you. Answer the question that you wish had been asked. Did you commit to stopping your crackdown against the opposition groups inside Russia led by Alexei Navalny? <laughs> Well, uh, to be honest, uh, this part of the question was not interpreted, or maybe uh, you decided to ask a second part of your question. But with regards to commitments to Ukraine, we have one single commitment to help and facilitate the implementation of the Minsk agreements. If the Ukrainian side is ready to do that, we are ready to follow this path. Otherwise, you can just give them the alternative fact. I want you to listen to me. I'm going to say this again. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Can't blame Bill too much knowing he had to sleep next to this cold fish every night. But if the powers that be are prone to lie about something as trivial as this, what's to stop them from pulling the wool over our eyes concerning matters of supreme importance? With all due respect to Socrates, maybe it's time we revisit the idea of a true democracy and have citizens either vote directly on the issues or pick people at random to serve one and done ten year terms. Granted, 7% of the population believe chocolate milk comes from brown cows, and 80% polled believe all food obtaining DNA should be labeled as such. God damn, there's a lot of stupid bastards walking around. And sure, we will undoubtedly end up drawing a few bones in the process. Then again, this guy would probably run the country for a Subway sandwich. Yet could he possibly do any worse of a job than has Mr. Ninja Turtle Power here? Or this wackadoodle who stalks victims of gun violence? Or all of the fiscally irresponsible bleeding hearts who would bankrupt the country with their free handouts if given half a chance. Not that either party is averse to sending us deeper and deeper into debt, for spending money we don't have is about the only thing both sides can agree on anymore. How are we gonna get out of here? We don't do that way out! <laughs> no, no, dead up, stupid! So unless we are willing to make some major changes and fast as to who is driving the bus, this will, sooner or later, be our fate. Oh my god. You maniacs! You blew it up! Oh, damn you! God damn you all to hell! 
where you're about to be. Throw me out of my house, will ya? Hey, wait, what are you doing here? It's not nice to evict the Queen Mother. Any last words, funny man? Tell Bob don't touch the remote. Blah.